Hello and welcome back to this van conversion series. Please like and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss an episode. We will be following our conversion of a Citroen Relay L3 H2 week by week. So if you missed last week's video, you can see it in the link here. Hi everyone, uh, just to recap on last week's um, conversion work. So we worked on the kitchen unit and the shower cubicle. Uh, we're really happy with how they've turned out. Uh, we've got it dry fitted in here, as you can see, uh, with the oven as well. This week, we'll focus on installing the wall trim, constructing the dinette seat boxes, building the trim for the sliding door, and also the boxes for the cutlery unit. One thing that's really important to do is everything is measured off of a center line in this conversion. Because the walls might be um, at different angles uh, in different places down the van, we run the center line all the way down the conversion and then all the cabinetry is scribed so that the front edge sits on the line. You can see this faint pencil line here. That's the line where the um, cabinetry on the off side of the vehicle is going to uh, sit on and that runs parallel to the center line. So yeah, just a little, little tip there um, when you're doing your van conversions uh, that obviously the walls aren't always square. So we like to run everything off of the center line. So something we've done on the end panels of the walls is we've just covered them in this white rock plastic. Uh, the advantages of the white rock is uh, you don't have to paint it, so it's already uh, white and it's really good to work with. Um, we've scribed in those end pieces and that's on the off side and you can see the near side end panel here. Uh, we've just glued and taped this in overnight. So that glue's gone off now uh, and those bits of tape can be removed. Uh, to finish this off nicely, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a bit of 10 mil by 10 mil white PVC angle and that will just cover this corner from the top of the wall all the way down to the bottom. So Stuart is currently working on the U-shaped seating area and we're making this out of 15 mil poplar plywood and you can see he's already cut some of the panels um, already to size. Um, something we like to do is where there's a notch, so these, this notch here is going to allow some of the utilities like heat vents to run through it. And we like to obviously run uh, a radius in the corners just because it looks nice and also if there is anything um, on it it's just a uh, a smoother uh, surface to touch. Uh, also on the plywood what we like to do is we like to chamfer uh, all of the edges with a trim route a bit. Um, this is a 45 degree bit I'll show you now with a flush trim on it. So this little three mil chamfer basically allows paint to better stick onto uh, the flat surface um, and also creates a smoother edge so that you've not got any sharp corners. Having a look at the sketch um, you can see here this is what we're working off so we've got obviously the cut list and the drawings and I, I label each of the panels with a different color and the seats themselves um, are going to be made up of uh, two main parts you've got the part above the, the garage what we're calling the garage at the back and then you've got the two parts above the wheel arch boxes here so we've broken it down into those two parts given the dimensions and the cut list and then we'll assemble it uh, inside the van. So here's the first two, two boxes started to be assembled. And we'll go and have a little dry fit inside the van and see how they look. So looking at the dinette seating area installation in a bit more detail, uh, I previously mentioned the importance of having this centre line running down the van. And this is where it really comes into its own because what we want to make sure is that the seats the kitchen unit all run parallel to that center line and then on the off side of the vehicle you can see where the seat line basically runs parallel to the center line that continues all the way up to the shower unit where the boiler unit and the wardrobe and the fridge is going to be located so it's really important that you get these lines marked on uh, i like to use a pencil because it's very detailed with a fine line um, and you can use a framing square just to check that all of your corners are, are square. And this really helps with the cabinetry 
when it comes to things like soft close hinges or blum hinges. So what we'll do now is we'll essentially oversize the units by about 20 mil and then when it comes to putting them in we'll scribe the back edge so that it brings the front edge in line with this uh, mark on the floor and that way we can actually get all the cabinets perfectly lined together because in in this van there's certain features on the walls like a pillar which runs all the way up here that actually creates a bit of a bulge in the wall so the wall as you look down them is not perfectly uh, flat there's actually a bulge uh, in the middle of the van and yeah you want to make sure that you don't press everything that is made square up against the wall because it might not line up square with the center line or the flooring of the van so work off the center line and i'll show you what these um, seats look like once they're installed i've just dry fitted the two box seats and these are exactly the same dimensions because they were built on the bench but you can see how the left hand side they're both good on the pencil line at the back of the van but the left hand side one needs to be scribed a little bit at the front edge so that it's only about five mil but if i scribe five mil off it will actually sit flush on that pencil line there so we'll take this one out take five mil off of that corner there and then put it back in and it should sit perfect so i've just taken two mil off of this back edge here which sits against the wall uh, and that will bring the front edge in line with the pencil mark and i'll just put this in now and there you can see the front edge now sits on that pencil mark we've cut all of the sheets now for the plywood seating area and what we're doing is we're just assembling it like a dry fit um, just because um, everything's square when it's built on the bench but when you move into the van obviously like I mentioned before the walls uh, might provide sort of a different angle so this seat box for example you can see the lid needs to be scribed to the wall so the back edge we're going to put a scribe line so that the front edge would then sit looks like about 10 mil on this corner we need to take off of that back corner there just so that the, the lid then sits flush but yeah we're really happy with how this is fitting in um, and the two seat boxes now sit parallel to the center line and once we're happy with the dry fit we can um, then begin to uh, prime everything um, cut the seat bin lids so there's going to be a lid here a lid there a lid there and then two uh, cupboard fronts on the back which I'll show you now but looking at the seat from the back you can see starting to take shape now uh, this back bench here uh, is going to have two cupboard fronts cut into the back that flip down and then they'll have access to what we call the the garage area so they'll have 180 um, centimeters sorry 180 centimeters of um, storage space in this back garage here um, you can see we've also put the lip for the table to sit on on the two bench seats so the table is going to sit on this lip here and we've actually made the depth because the worktop slash table is going to be 26 mil deep from the top of this bin lid uh, to this ledge is 26 mil so the actual table would sit at exactly the same height as the uh, top of the seats I'm currently working on this area here above the sliding door. Uh, I'm using a bit of plywood and a curve cutting technique to bring the plywood around the curve. I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see I've still got the bottom to do, but this is just rough cut at the moment. You can see the screws there, they'll get hidden. And then the curve cut is obviously this piece here there I've curved cut and then up along this area here I'll, uh, I'll box this area in so all that pillar is hidden. I'm about to create a curve cut in the 9mm plywood so you can see it here and what we've done is we've made sure the grain on the veneer is going lengthways down the piece of timber 
and then I set my depth gauge on my chop saw and then cut every couple of mil a slot. It doesn't go all the way through the timber, it goes to the last uh, layer just before the veneer. And then I use my chop saw with a depth stop, which is this, so that when I plunge, it stops uh, and doesn't cut all the way through the timber. And then when I slide, it will make that cut. Uh, I'm using a sacrificial fence here. You can see that's where the cuts go, uh, just to allow the blade, to, uh, the space to pass through uh, the entirety of this piece here. So I'll get that cut now and show you what it looks like. So here's the piece that I just uh, used the chop saw to kerf cut along and I'm now going to show you how it fits the shape of this profile here. If I just put it in and then ease the curve where the wall is going to be and then what I'll do is I'll just rough screw it in at the moment uh, and then sand it back so that it's flush. And then when it comes to fit this once it's been painted, we'll put filler in the holes down the side uh, we'll glue it to the end grain of the plywood and then we'll stick some brad nails in there as well just so it's in nice and secure. But yeah, really happy with how this is looking and this is covering sort of the end grain of the uh, walls at the kitchen unit end. So at this stage here I've just glued and nailed the end trim. <clears throat> I've used the sanding pad on the grinder just to bring that flush with the wall. Now I'll use some two part filler, which is this, really good stuff. I'll use some two part filler in the kerf, this bit here, just so that it's all smooth. I'll fill all the pinholes and then sand it back and it's ready to then prime. So we can see the sliding door. Um, I've built this trim piece out of nine mil ply and I showed you using the kerf cut, how we get it to hit the shape of this uh, curve here. And then also in this corner here, that curve there. We've still got a bit more filler on here, which we'll sand back. Um, and then this piece here is obviously gonna get hidden by the overhead cupboard. We'll box that all in. But yeah, we are gonna have this bit visible. So what we've done is we've uh, got the filler here and you can see we've got the end grain of the plywood. It's nice and smooth but we're gonna continue this groove here. So we'll sand the groove out using a sanding block, which is just a block of wood with some 120 grit. And what we do is we just rub this like that. And it continues the groove all the way to the end. So you can see that groove there is transferred onto the end grain of the plywood. And then once that's painted, it will look lovely. So I'll continue that on this piece, this piece, and this piece and this one and then obviously uh, these bits will be inside the overhead. So I've been boxing in above the sliding door and you can see uh, this piece of timber here is a bit of structure because um, we've put plywood onto the uh, glued and screwed onto the metal at an angle and then we're just going to use this piece here as a bit of structure uh, to have another bit of boxing in just above that. I could have boxed in the whole thing but I just wanted it to be as low profile as possible but rather than having a big bit of boxing, uh, I've got this angled piece here and then there'll be a small bit of boxing here. And then we'll just put a piece on here uh, and then yeah, just have an angled piece here so that it, it's all boxed in and looks nice. Otto's now building boxes uh, for the cutlery drawer and for the pots and pans out from 12 mil ply. You can see we're just gluing and brad nailing these in. And nice and strong. And yeah, we'll dry fit these to the kitchen unit before paint. Stuart's just getting a bit of top coat on the walls, uh, just as we'll be putting the unit's back in soon, so we want to get the top coat on the sides so that everything's painted before uh, putting the units back in. 
in next week's video, we'll be working on the boiler and the water plumbing. We will be installing the overhead cupboards and also constructing the cupboard fronts and hardware for those. So stay tuned and we look forward to seeing you then.